My name is Jasmine. I'm 31 years old. I grew up in an East Asian family, had very traditional education, studying a lot, and played no sports, no hobbies, nor have any dates. I did manage to get into Stanford, graduated, and found a job in tech. After graduation, I tried many competitions and hobbies. However, I still feel unfulfilled, and I'm always looking for a big challenge. Until I found bodybuilding. In the new year of 2020, I made a resolution. I want to do a bikini competition this year. So I did research online and found out I need to lift heavy weights in the gym and I need to eat balanced macros, protein, fat, and carbs. So I dived right in and started lifting heavy. Started doing a row split, shoulder, back day, leg day, wrist day, and arm day.、Yeah. Two months in, I started having a lot of results. I started seeing body transformation, growing muscles, also lost a lot of fat. I was very happy. I was very driven to keep going, and I had a target day of August for the competition. However, something unexpected happened in March. COVID hit. At the beginning two months, it was very serious lockdown. We couldn't go out anywhere except for grocery trips, and I couldn't go to the gym. I couldn't keep lifting. I started to become flat. I don't have muscle definition anymore, and I start holding a lot of water. At this point is when I decided to take a trip. I want to change my situation, and I want to have equipment to keep lifting, keep growing. That's when I decided to go to Phoenix. It also served as a stop to heal my mind and heal my mental depression from all the lockdown. Bikini competition is very tough. If my mind is not ready, I am not going to do it. In this vlog. I documented all 24 weeks of my bikini competition prep, including my workouts, my nutrition, as well as each week's check-in photos, my progress, my weight, and my coaches' feedbacks. I really want to thank my family and thank my coaches, as well as thank you, the audience, for watching this video, for supporting me along my journey. I hope my journey inspired you in some way. This video took me two months to edit. If you like it, please give a thumb up. It really encourages me to keep documenting and keep sharing and keep inspiring each other. Phoenix was so healing. I went on so many hiking trips, and I got so much sunshine in enjoying the mountains and have a great mindset restarted. I was mentally ready for the competition for the prep upcoming. If you wonder what is bikini competition, here let me try to explain. Bikini competition is part of bodybuilding shows that are held year-round, countrywide, and usually in fit cons or hotels. Within the show, there are different categories for women and men. These categories include bikini, figure, physique. Fitness and bodybuilding, all of which have unique expectations for muscle size and leanness from the contestants. The bikini division specifically is for competitors with the least muscle mass. Competitors are organized into different classes based on age and height. As a class, they walk out on stage and compete based on stage presence. Body composition and overall balance of muscle proportions. Usually, top competitors come in with a solid foundation of muscle. They have small waists and a full round glutes, round shoulders forming an hourglass shape, and of course, very lean and very conditioned. In terms of diet, I generally live a very healthy lifestyle and try to eat whole foods. 
and before I had experienced weight cut and making weight for my Thai competition, so my food was good. But this time around, I started incorporating more protein in all of my meals as well as snack. However, at this time, I still have very limited knowledge on food, and I still have cheat meals once in a while, actually twice in a week. I earned, earned it. it. Smells so good. I'm gonna munch this down. Well, it's a maintainable lifestyle. It is not very good for a bikini competition, which has crazy lean requirements. So you can see my belly standing out. And the first time I was in my bikini suit, I didn't look quite very much like a bikini competitor. First week of prep, I became a home workout queen because we had such limited space in a small little apartment in downtown San Francisco. I had made a video about later we moved out of the area, but here we were still living in the small one-bedroom apartment with zero gym equipment, so I had to get very creative. Utilizing all the subjects in the house and do a lot of home workouts. Most of those are circuit style, so I can get my heart rate up and get sweaty and burn a lot of calories while maintaining the shape and muscle size. Nutrition-wise, I started adding high-volume veggies and complex carbs, as well as introducing a lot more protein into my diet. Both plant-based and animal-based proteins, and I started to measure out my food and started diligently tracking them in my fitness pal. And during the weekends, we went on hiking trips. This is to increase energy expenditure, even if I was not working out. And this is very good for general health as well. And I encourage you to do the same. Just go out, take a walk, and take a hike. Breathe in some fresh air. And here is the first check-in, week one check-in. I lost two pounds after following strict diet plan and diligently working out, even if I had zero equipment at home. I was very happy with my progress, and I was very determined to follow it through. On the second week, the weather had gotten warmer, so I started working out outdoors as well, using body weight benches and doing a lot of heat circuit style. Sometimes I use a tree to do pull-ups or progression to pull-ups. I am still working on those. <laughs> I will update you on the progress. And at home, I use a lot of objects to replace weights because I didn't have access to a gym. Those objects include resistant bands and protein powder jars filled with water, laundry detergent, and a full pack of water bottles. Nutrition-wise, I started forming the habit of eating egg whites for breakfast. Since I have to eat so much egg whites for so many breakfasts, I started developing many variations of egg whites recipes and became an egg white recipe expert. 
I am very proud of my creations. This is very fun. Even if I had to stick to a very strict diet, I try to have some fun and try to play with it, include my creation and imagination, and never get boring and never deal with boring, not any single day. <laughs> The third week, I made a big decision. I moved temporarily to Las Vegas. Its gyms were still open, and I definitely needed a full gym to fully train and develop muscle. It was a long overnight road trip to Las Vegas, so I packed all of my meals, and I did not skip the workout in Airbnb both the night I arrived and the morning I woke up. It was super nice, refreshing to work out next to a pool. So one day when I get a house, I would love to have a pool as well. I will work out every day next to the pool. However, the first stop is not gym, rather it is Puppy Town. We have bought our first puppy together. Her name is Habachi. She is a Shiba Inu, just 5 months when we met her. Super little, super derpy, and super shy. <laughs> This is the first time in my life that I have a dog. I am super excited but also super nervous. I didn't know what to expect. But later, Habachi added so much fun to my life. I had so many walks with her. She is definitely my biggest cheerleader in my bikini competition prep. Thank you so much, Habachi. I am so excited to have you. And please comment below if you want to see more Habachi videos. I will make those videos. After all that puppy excitement, I still gotta check in and still gotta train. This week, I lost additional half a pound, made additional progress in getting tighter, and I look better in my bikini suits at this point. And I found a very good gym in Las Vegas, EOS. It has a movie theater inside of the gym. Many gym goers here are very advanced. You can tell from their biceps, their glutes, and their overall athletic ability. They are probably dancers, actors in the shows, in the big name Cirque du Soleil shows. Additionally, there is a big fitness pool, full length, three lanes, I definitely enjoy here, as well as taking TikTok videos and having dance classes. After two months of not seeing a full gym, this was like my dream come true. It was like guys just graduated boys only college and see the world of girls. So I quickly went to the supermarket, grabbed some super easy to cook food because I wanted to spend all of my time in the gym this week. I didn't want to spend any extra minutes in the kitchen.
During the weekend, I flew back to San Francisco to get together with my fiance and my doggo Habachi. I miss the gym in Las Vegas so much. So before I left, I made sure to fully utilize the gym, train absolutely to the sorest possible in all of my muscle groups. Later, I learned this is not necessary. Training to sore is great, but training every day consistently is even better. It was my birthday weekend. I made myself a matcha pancake high in protein. This is such a great birthday cake. Check out the recipe in the video linked below. And since it's birthday weekend, I of course had some cheat meal. I had a big salad and I had a pizza. And I checked in with my coach. He is not very happy. <laughs> So from this week on, I rarely had any cheat meal anymore. There was one binge, but that was it. The rest of the prep, I was sticking to my diet pretty strictly. This week, I paid a visit to my coach, who is located in Tampa, Florida, all the way across the United States on the East Coast. In preparation for the trip, I prepared a full week of meals, including healthy protein, complex carbs, and some fruits, as well as measure out my protein powder for extra protein on the road. Food scale is my BFF. And of course, before taking off, I did a very good workout at home because I will be flying all day from San Francisco to Las Vegas, Las Vegas to St. Louis, and St. Louis finally to Tampa, Florida. I need all that energy for the whole day of flying, flying, flying away. If you ask me, I would say this trip is definitely worth it. I got some sunshine time at the beach, experienced the beautiful sight, but as well as the stormy side of summer Florida. After a short relaxation, I went to the gym, met up with my coach, and started training right away. Okay. I only had two nights here. One night we trained legs, glutes. The other night we trained shoulders, arms. But after I came back to Las Vegas, I kept training according to what coach has taught me the proper way of training. And of course, I can't ignore nutrition. I cleaned up my diet even more, started to eat very lean protein from fish and chicken breast. And of course, developed methods to cook them in batch and super fast, saving me more time so that I can spend time training rather than in the kitchen. Yes, if you want veggie too, I have an idea for you. Frozen veggie bags, these are the best. You just place them in the microwave and then pull, pull, pull. Couple buttons on the microwave and then a couple minutes later, after you went through the toilet, come back, they are done. You don't have to chop chop, you don't have to cook, so much time saved.
The sixth week, another life event happened. We got married in Las Vegas. Our wedding was supposed to be in New York City in May. However, because of COVID, we could not carry on the original wedding plan, and we have to get married in Las Vegas. But it was super fun. We got married with Elvis Presley. That. How was your haircut? Yeah, I don't look like a wookie anymore. Yeah. <laughs> How much did you spend?、Uh, big, big money this time. Instead of my traditional five dollar Chinese haircut in Chinatown, I got、uh, spent twenty this time. Oh wow, that's very expensive.、Yeah. Are you going to go break? Yes. Broke. <laughs> Broke now. <laughs> Ryan Hooters.、Uh, yeah. Wow, very nice. <laughs> wow, look at that. No runner is gonna get you now. <laughs> After the wedding, we went to the strip where all the fun in Las Vegas happened. Of course, during COVID, a lot of the venues were closed, but we were still having fun walking around. Treated our doggo Hibachi with dog dinner, and we went to a steakhouse, all you can eat Brazilian style. Being in an all you can eat place during prep is not a good idea. I had to keep my calories low and couldn't enjoy myself fully. However, it was still fun, fun and torturing at the same time. And progress is not linear. This week, I gained half a pound compared to last week. So after the wedding, after all the fun, I went back to the gym and started training harder than ever before. I also had the privilege to work out with my roommate once. My roommate is super active. Moved to Las Vegas from Ohio. She likes being active. Doesn't like being indoors so much as most Ohio people do due to the weather. So she moved to Las Vegas. It's much nicer over here. I feel so good after I started working out. During this time, I also kept experimenting with different styles of cooking, different ways to cook my protein, so that I have a lot of variety. I don't get tired of my food, because you know, during prep, when you are growing muscle, it's optimal to eat a lot of meals during the day. And you can get tired of food. Eating can become a job. Most of us think only dieting can be hard. Actually, eating can also be hard. So I try to make my food interesting and try to find out different ways to cook protein in a delicious way. Make them into desserts, pancakes, ready-to-go snacks, and travel with them. At the end of the three weeks, it's time to say goodbye to Las Vegas. I am leaving. Going back to San Francisco, I stopped by San Diego to meet up with my friend, and went hiking with her and got sunburned. But it was so worth it. So good to get some outdoor time and friends time. And of course, during the road, I still have to do my Sunday check-in, and this time my physique was so much better. By the end of summer, I moved back to San Francisco. 
reunion with my husband and doggo Habachi. Trust me, I miss Jim, but I also miss them. I want to stay home, even though this means no equipment, and my workout becomes walking Habachi three times a day, and Ben's workout, as well as a lot of stairs climbing. Hello, this is taking doggo up the stairs, number twenty. Doggo. Put me to the stair direction and put me away from the elevator. And saying, "We gotta take the stairs. We gotta always take the stairs." No elevator. What are you doing with the elevator? You gotta take the stairs. <laughs> okay. So I say, "All right. I'll be a good girl. I'll take the stairs, but I still have to carry you." What do I do? And she said, "Carry me, carry me, carry me." Occasionally, I got access to gym equipments when I was working out with my gym buddies. They had the luxury to own couple pieces of gym equipments. In 2020, the most overpriced item is definitely gym equipments, particularly dumbbells. When we are out in the field, the biggest fear is that someone will steal away our dumbbells. Speaking of gym buddies, if you have the luxury to work out with someone, then definitely go for it. Working out together is so much more fun and so much more motivating with the competitiveness in it. And I made a lot of progress at this point, both from the workouts, also from the nutrition. Nutrition-wise, I was eating a lot of protein, a lot of egg whites, and a lot of fish, lots of veggies to fill up the volume, as well as tracking my macros diligently, using protein powder and yogurt sparingly, as they can add a lot of calories to my overall diet. But I hit a plateau in this month. My weight fluctuated between 131 and 133 pounds. Some weeks I would eat so little yet still gaining weight. My coach explained this is due to water retention, high carb low carb day, stress, hormones, period, sleep, activities, etc. But I didn't have any time to break through these stresses before a new life chapter unfolds. We relocated to Southern California. We left the apartment we lived in for three years in San Francisco. Of course, days of packing, non-sleeping, arranging new home, calling different services has taken out all of our energy. Let alone the eight-hour long drive from Northern to Southern California. We arrived at our new home, excited yet super exhausted. Yeah, we arrived.、Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Happy? Do you like it? <laughs> One thing I am so happy I did is I pre-prepared a lot of healthy meals before the move. So when I was busy unpacking, arranging the new home, and everything was still hectic and organized, I still had access to healthy food. I was very grateful. And finally, we had opportunity to go to the grocery store, and of course, I stock up on very healthy groceries. It is still in the middle of summer here, so we had some summer fun, had some tacos. Most of my tacos went to my doggo. I only got to taste it a little. But I was determined. After my competition, I was definitely going to make it up by eating a lot of food. And SoCal, it is such a great place for workout. I immediately fell in love with the beach, with sunshine, and with all the outdoor activities. Lots of machines set up against the wall, against the grass over there. A lot of people working out, 
and there are weights, there are weights, there are weights. Oh my god, I'm so excited. I haven't seen weights in such a long time. In the next five weeks, life finally settled down. I had access to a full gym, to a trainer, and I can train every day. I was so happy. I definitely make use of every opportunity to train. I appreciate every opportunity to go to the gym and make full use of it. Nutrition-wise, I introduced a lot more variety while not sacrificing my overall calorie goals and my micro goals every day. This is done by having a lot of veggies, a lot of spices, and I was very careful with condiments because sometimes condiments can be very high in sugar and sodium. So I track everything, I measure everything, and absolutely following my diet to the T. Of course, cravings came in. That's when I developed protein cookies and cucumber snacks with zero calorie sweeteners and sometimes PB2. Those are super low in calories, well, super satiating, and even my dog will like it. Try it. And since I have to keep my carb relatively low, I started using carb hacks. For example, konjac noodle, konjac rice, keto wrap, and no rice burrito bowl. Actually, a Korean burrito bowl is a bim bim bam bowl. Mmm, so yummy! Clock was ticking, time was getting close, show day was coming up. I was getting closer and closer to my stage weight and presence. During the peak week, I was very careful, extremely careful with my carb intake because it affects my water retention and how much water I hold below my skin. It affects how I look, how tight I am on the stage on show day. So I was eating a lot of fish, a lot of asparagus to share the extra water. And my dog was very happy to share my tilapia meal. But I was getting super tired of eating tilapia, asparagus, day in and day out. On the weekend leading up to the show day, I went on a trip and stopped by a super famous donut shop in Los Angeles. But all I got was dark coffee and zero calorie sweetener. 
Workout wise, I did a lot of high rep stuff, and boot camp fit my needs. It's high rep, lots of cardio, keep my heart rate up, keep sweating a lot, shed the extra water, and I was walking a lot. And my dog was super happy, was cheering me on every day. And at nights, I found some activity for me to do every single night, because. We all know evening time is the most dangerous time for binge eating, and so close to the competition, I cannot afford any single binge eating instances. So I planned ahead. I filled all my evenings with activities, movie theaters, dance classes to make sure I am not in my house, not anywhere close to my kitchen, so that I definitely follow my diet plan, keep my mind off food. Because this is also the most dangerous time I would binge eat. Finally, it is time. Show day had come. How exciting! After a small bite of my favorite treat, I gathered all of my courage to go on a trip to San Diego, check in my event hotel, and got my athlete number, which is number twenty-two. Super exciting and super nervous. This was going to be my first bikini competition. After 22 weeks of hard work in both my body and my makeup skills and my hairdressing skills and the skills of wearing bikini competition suit, all of those are going to come together finally in this day. When I was waiting backstage, this was the most magical moment of my year. This was a waiting room full of other bikini competitors, full of other driven girls who pursue their dreams, who go after their big aspirations. I was so blessed to be together with them, to be on the same stage with them, and I definitely did my best. I did my posing routine perfectly. I didn't shake. I presented with big smiles, and I was super happy with my performance. I ended up taking ninth place in true novice, eighth place in novice, and seventh place in open. In my second show, which was just two weeks following, I got medals. I got fourth place in novice and sixth place in open. I am super happy as this is my first year of bodybuilding. This is even my first year of weightlifting. During 24 weeks of prep, I've had three coaches. I moved three times and I dropped 20 pounds, all the while during quarantine. So I was super proud of myself. Super proud of what I have achieved in 2020. Nothing and no one can take away my pride, as I have worked so hard for this moment. This one is that two bars ago. So that was it. That was my 24 weeks long bikini competition prep. I was so proud of myself. All of this effort was so worth it. I made this decision and I followed through. Throughout the journey, I gained so much knowledge. I liberated myself in many fitness and nutrition knowledge. I feel like I have a lot more tools in my toolkit. In the future, if I want to do shredding again. Or if I don't want this bodybuilder lifestyle, I just want a normal, healthy lifestyle. I still have so many tools for me to achieve my fitness goals. And along the way, I have made so many friends from the bikini competition prep. And not to mention that moment when I was waiting in the back room of the competition stage. The whole room was filled with bikini competition girls, and I can see they have such amazing physique. In that room is so magic. I feel like there are so many people in this world. They have a goal and they push themselves and eventually achieve that goal. And that moment was all of us gathering in the same place. That was such a magical feeling. My life is different from that day. In the future, whatever goal I have, I have the confidence that I will go after my goal, put in the effort, and reach my goal. 
So I hope that inspires you to follow through your goal, to pick up a hobby you always wanted to try. And I guarantee you, the process will be so much fun if you put effort in it, if you put your heart in it, and eventually you'll be so proud of yourself. Thank you so much for watching today, and we'll see you in future videos. Take care and bye.